Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a couple of interesting diaries from this weekend. First of all, one from Guy about WebLogic. He took a look at his honeypot and found that the older WebLogic vulnerability from January is still being exploited or attempted to be exploited. In this particular case, it was a crypto coin mining script that the attacker attempted to install. That's, of course, something we have seen for a while now. And since this question came up uh, last week, actually in an internal uh, discussion, uh, Didier uh, did uh, publish a quick tip in how to use his Oli Dump tool to extract visual basic code from malicious documents. Of course, Oli Dump is meant to analyze uh, these uh, complex office documents. And one of the things that it can do is point out that there are macros, but you can also use it to then pretty much automatically extract uh, the respective macro. And then just to follow up uh, to the iOS and Mac OS updates from last week, uh, there was an iOS update for iOS 14 as well as one for iOS 12. Uh, there was no iOS update for iOS 13. The idea here is that anybody that's running 13 should be able to upgrade to 14, but you are vulnerable if you are running iOS 13. Now, older versions for macOS, like macOS 10.14 and 10.13, we didn't see an update for those yet. These are still supported. So if they're vulnerable, we should see an update for uh, these older versions of macOS. And let's encrypt this warning that starting September next year, older versions of Android, and that's uh, before Android version 7.1.1, will no longer recognize Let's Encrypt certificates as valid. The problem here is when Let's Encrypt first started out, uh, they didn't have their own trusted certificate authority. So they actually used someone else's certificate authority in order to sign their certificates. And ever since have cross-signed their certificates. So uh, they actually signed uh, with uh, both of these root certificates, the old one and now uh, Let's Encrypt's own certificate. The problem is this original certificate, well, uh, this will expire September first next year. So now only Let's Encrypt's own set of authority will be considered valid. And these old versions of Android, well, uh, they don't include uh, this newer Let's Encrypt root certificate yet. Now, Android 7.1 or Nougat uh, was introduced in 2016. So it's about uh, four years old now, uh, but uh, looks like a third of Android devices is still using uh, this older operating system. For some of them, it may be less of an issue like TV sticks and the like. Uh, but uh, if you still have an older Android phone, well, you may see certificate errors as a result. And if you're running F5's big IP time to update a couple of interesting vulnerabilities uh, that were patched here last week, in particular, a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the big IP traffic management user interface or TMUI, an exploit uh, would inject a JavaScript into the administrator's user interface. So if an administrator uh, then uh, visits uh, the admin interface, uh, their browsers could essentially be hijacked. And Linux is getting rid of some legacy in the Linux 5.10 kernel. You will no longer find the set and get FS function. This was a function that has been present in Linux ever since the very beginning of uh, Linux uh, version 0.1, I believe. And it allowed some limited access to kernel space from normal user space software. That FS register, the name refers to actually went away a long time ago. And there is now this set limit, I think, or mem limit uh, that's being used instead. So uh, 
either way, uh, this has been a problem a couple pa- times in the past, this function, and now they're just uh, getting rid of it and hopefully not breaking too much in the process. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.